Okay, so what I'm doing is some people have had problems with automatic 1111 because sometimes it just simply wouldn't work. One thing you've got to do is go to github.com slash the last Ben fast hyphen stable diffusion. I'm going to put that link below this video. So it's below the like button. If you check there, you'll see that link. Go there, make sure you've got a fresh copy. Just grab the new one, make a copy. It'll 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 open up. Go to this point, automatic 111. It'll come up here and it'll say copy to drive. You're just going to go copy to drive and it will produce the uh, image here of the Colab on your Google Drive. Now, make sure you're running your runtime, change runtime type to whatever you happen to be. Right now I'm running it premium, premium at high RAM because I'm uh, doing it on the, uh, basically the account for the $10 a month or something like that, uh, just for doing some of these tests and for helping you all out here because I want this to spit through it fast. So I'm using their premium servers. So uh, please hit the like uh, button because that'll help me um, at least get the monetization going so that I can at least pay for some of this stuff. One of the big things that you're going to do once we start off here, the very first one is your Google Drive. So it's going to click into that and start uh, running that. And I'm going to access that and say, yes, it's okay. And I'm going to approve it and I'm going to allow it and it's going to spin. And what's going to happen here is on this side, you will see that it will start to appear there. And if it doesn't appear, you just refresh it with this one up here. And there it is, my G drive. Now in that G drive, you can also click this um, button here, this folder icon, and that's going to uh, do the same thing as this does. So it's mounted it. Now, if you're having problems with uh, it running and just not even working, go to your SD folder on your Google Drive and kill it, delete it, remove it. Don't even don't even bother just getting the web uh, UI folder. Just get get what you need out of it. Get your output folder, which is in the SD folder, and you will run like here. Mm -hmm. In my SD folder, you've got your stable diffusion web UI. Sometimes you can just delete that and then run the rest of this. And sometimes that'll work. Sometimes it won't. So you need to just delete the whole SD folder. In the stable diffusion folder, however, once you start producing images and so forth, what happens is it will create a folder in here for output. And if you have already produced some things, they will appear in here and you will want to save those to your hard drive and so forth, get those off or move them to a different part of your Google Drive, but delete this folder, get rid of the SD folder, and then start anew and install the automatic 111 repo, click the requirements. So all of that's going to start uh, putting in a fresh copy of the current uh, repo because you just clicked on the last Ben fast stable diffusion and uh, collab, the new one. And that's going to install all the requirements because you got rid of that, which I already did. That's what I did. One of the um, problems that does come into play is if you're trying to run the Dream Booth extension off of the automatic 1111 one, you will have the problem sometimes of that screwing everything up. So don't try to run the dream booth through there on the website here the um, last ben fast stable diffusion when you go there down here at the bottom is the dream booth collab uh, click on that by itself you set as a separate program don't run it through automatic uh, a um 111 because that's that's problematic i i've had problems with that left and right and um, it usually won't load and it becomes a, a difficult situation. And again, I've been playing and testing the 2.1 models, training my own models and so forth on that. They're okay. I mean, you can, you, you get so much right now, at least, you get so much more variety and so much more predictable content results from doing it 
uh, with the 1.5 models. It produces really good work. I mean, all of it is, you know, up to your prompts and so forth and iterations. Take the time, learn it, it's going to help you. Uh, here, I've got my models folder. It's a separate folder. I do not put it in my SD folder. That way, I don't have to worry about if I, you know, dump the SD folder, delete it, and that'll lose my models. So I put my models in a separate folder on the Google Drive, and I simply go through here and I copy path, and where it says model download here, get rid of that. Where it says model download here, all I'm going to do is go to this point where it says path to model. So it's gonna do either or one of these here. So it'll either load the 1.5 model, if that's all you've got on this. If you put this in here, it'll run it off that, which means it'll drive the models for automatic uh, 1111 that you'll be able to use in the drop-down menu from whatever link you put in here. Or you can do it from an external link through this particular one. I always just use the middle one because I have I have had hundreds of models that I've used. It's easier to put them through here. Once you do that, it draws the folder link, puts it into the system, and it's set up. Here is where Dream Booth has caused all sorts of problems. It doesn't load. And again, that's the Dream Booth extension in Automatic 1111. Until that gets fixed, and don't even bother. Use Dream Booth separately if you're going to train your uh, models. So here again, I'm using the model version 1.5, which is important. And I don't have to click local tunnel. I'm going to just sit there and run it as it is. This sometimes takes a little while. And we'll come back when it's done. And you'll see right here, it's loading the weights from this uh, particular model, which is the D DD Diffusion style uh, CKPT, which is the checkpoint for D-diffusion. It's just one of the models that I happen to have in there, and it's a 1.5 model. So 1.5, and this is a 1.5 model version that I'm running. Everything should be clean and mean. There we go, running on local, and then running on the Gradio. And I'll get rid of the old stable diffusion. There we go. So everything else is working here. Training, settings, extensions. So on the extensions, the ones that did work, that I kind of liked and I was playing with, was the prompt generator. I found that kind of entertaining. So if you want to be lazy and you want to have it generate a bunch of prompts for you, uh, go through there. That's really all I'm going to do. I use DaVinci Resolve for generating my depth maps for when I do color correction and things like that color grading so I don't have to actually use the extensions here. So I'm going to apply this and restart. And, and you can do this on each individual extension. That way you'll know which extension is causing a problem. If you try to quit it, restart the whole system. Sometimes it doesn't work here. If you look back on this page, it's going to tell you some of the things that are happening. Looks like it's going there. Sometimes this doesn't come back up. So we've created the first one. We've restarted the UI so it comes up under a second gradio. So this may not ever refresh properly. So you go back to that original one, go down to the latest, and there we go. And I'm going to try some of the other extensions and I'll let you know how they work, but I needed to get that out to you. If Dream Booth isn't working, trash your SD folder. If the stable diffusion, the automatic 111 isn't working, trash the folder. Save the things that you need to, whether if you've, you've got uh, items that you've already trained. If you've got, you're going through here and you've done a lot of work on creating embeddings and things like that, save those, save those outside and trash the folder. And then put in a new copy and run it. Because I wasn't able to run this. I was, I was working with the same problems other people were having. When I started trashing these folders and then going through the extensions and which ones were causing problems, it helps narrow it down. So this is some experience for you. So hopefully that helps you. Any questions, please put them in the comments below. I do read them. I have a lot of work, so I'm doing my best to get to this and try to get some information back to you. And I hope it helps. Thank you.